Hi, my name is Mike Dillon and welcome back. And if this is the first time joining us, I appreciate you watching and welcome. So in this video, I'm going to be building a hand tool for the 2017 tool build off put on by James Wright at Woodbite Wright. I'll have a link to a video in the description below that gives you some more information and how you can enter if it's something you might be interested in. In this video, I'm going to be building a small coping saw modeled after a frame saw or bow saw. I thought it would be something that would be fun and at the same time functional. So stick around, check it out, and uh, see how I built it. Let's get started. So I'm going to be building this hand tool with only hand tool. Lately, I've preferred using hand tools only uh, for several reasons. Uh, mostly comfort and convenience. Uh, I don't need to find a place to plug in a power tool. I don't need to set up a power tool. Uh, they don't make any a whole lot of noise. They don't kick up a whole lot of dust, so I don't have to worry about uh, dust collection or wearing a dust mask. Uh, there's not a, uh, a lot of fast moving parts, so I don't have to worry as much about protective equipment. So uh, it's a huge convenience for me. It's a lot more comfortable, a lot more relaxing, and I'm really glad I did it. Um, I'm going to be probably using hand tools a lot more often going forward, um, although I, I am going to be using power tools quite a bit when I'm building uh, bigger projects and need to get done quicker, uh, as it just makes more sense. So here I start off by grabbing some cutoffs of some red oak I have from some other projects. This red oak came from a tree in my front yard that I had milled a few years back and it's now dry and ready to use. Uh, so that's what I'm going to be using here to build the stool. So I start off by dimensioning the wood um, as it is rough to start. I started out with uh, dimensioning it by cutting it down and then planing it on four sides and making sure all four sides are even and square. So I needed some hardware to hold the blade to the tool and I had some of these flathead bolts and wing nuts sitting around so I decided I would use these for that purpose. So in order to use these to hold the blade in, I needed some way for the bolt to hold the blade. So what I needed to do is cut a couple of notches in it so I could slide the blade in and secure it. For this I just used a handheld hacksaw and that seemed to work pretty good. So here with the hand plane I'm just flattening, smoothing and uh, squaring up the edges of the center support piece. Next I am using a marking knife to cut marks into the ends of the center support piece for cutting the tenon that will fit into the mortise in the side pieces for the frame of the saw. Here I'm using a Japanese pole saw to do all of my cuts. I really prefer using Japanese pole saws uh, ever since I started trying them out. I really love them. I like the thin curve for the saw, the small size. They're very sharp. They cut like a hot knife through butter and I like cutting on the pull as it really seems to tension the blade of the saw really keeping it nice and straight. I find when using other types of saws where you cut on the push and it's probably just due to lack of practice but when I push on the saw it sometimes bends and binds up and uh, these saws just seem so much easier to use for me. Uh, so for me it's just a personal preference but I really like When building, in some cases I use plans, other cases I don't. In this case, I did not. So at this point in the build, I had the center piece, uh, center support piece cut to width. When I started building it, I realized that that width was a little bit too wide and it made a lot more sense to rip it down to a smaller size for aesthetics of the saw. Um, and it just, it just looks a lot better. Um, and just made more sense to rip it down. Once I made the rip cut, I pulled out the plane once again and smoothed the side down, squared it up the best I could. For this project, you don't really have to get everything 100% perfect. Everything just needs to be square-ish. So it's, uh, everything doesn't have to be 100% perfect and square. It just needs to be, you know, fairly close. 
So here with my pull saw, I'm just cutting a miter on the ends of the center support just for looks basically, and then just cleaning up the tenon. For a plane in this project, I'm using a Stanley number four that I picked up on eBay pretty cheap and just restored it. So here I pull it out again, and what I'm doing is just kind of rounding over the corners that I cut that miter in on the center support just to kind of make it a smooth rounded side. Using the tenon on the center support that I just cut for measure, I'm just marking out for the mortises and the side support pieces. Using a quarter inch chisel, which is about the thickness of the tenon, I hog out the material for the mortise for the tenon to fit into. Um, the mortise and tenon sizes don't really have to be exact. Um, these are small pieces, so they'll hold together with even just the smallest uh, mortise and tenon. So here I test the fit, the hole isn't quite deep enough for the tenon. I could either trim off the tenon or hog out the hole a little bit more with the chisel. I decided just to open up the hole a bit more, uh, but you could go either way. Like I said, it's going to hold no matter what, it's not a very big tool. Using my brace and auger bit, I drill out the holes for the bolt to slide into that will hold the blade. Most of these steps I'm just walking you through one side of the tool as the process is going to be exactly the same for the other side. So for instance, I'm drilling a hole in one side of the tool, the same hole is going to be drilled into the other as with the center support, tenon and mortise cuts are going to be exactly the same as well. For the two side supports or handles, I'm basically just going to draw a design on the wood and cut it out to shape and then uh, clean it up. So it doesn't have to be anything exact, I just wanted to draw a design on there that I liked and then just cut it out. I'm starting off by doing the major rough cuts for the shape with my pull saws and then going in after with my rasp and sandpaper to uh, round it over and smooth it out. Then coming in with the cheap $5 coping saw that I already have, I am going to finish the cuts and make them more rounded. Here I am coming in with the rasp to round things over before I come back through with the sandpaper to smooth things out.
So here for the other handle or side support, I'm just following the exact same process. Drawing on the design on the wood, doing the rough cuts with the pole saw, coming through with the rasp and sandpaper to round over and smooth it out. Here with the pole saw, I am cutting in the bird's mouth cuts for the string to wrap around that will um, be used for tightening the saw. So here I'm applying a coat of boiled linseed oil to all the parts as well as a good coat of Johnson's paste wax once the boiled linseed oil is dry. And here I am installing the bolts and wing nuts that are going to be used to hold the saw blade on. Then installing the blade using the notches I made in the bolts. Next I grabbed some string, sized it up, cut it, and tied it to the frame. And here I just grabbed a cutoff that was in a pretty good shape for using to twist and tighten the string that's used to tighten the saw up. It was actually just a cutoff from one of the handles. So I just used that, cut a little notch into it, rasped and sanded it and put a finish on it and used that to tighten the saw. So here you just slide that small piece of wood in between the two pieces of string into that little notch that I cut, twist the piece of wood up and lay it against the center support of the saw to hold it in place and that is what is used to tighten the saw. So now that the saw is complete, let's take it for a test run. So as you can see with some trial and error, I realized that I needed to tighten the saw a lot more than I did. So I put it back together and this time tightened it a lot more. I realized that I don't have to be as concerned about how tight I tighten the saw up. It is made of oak, so it's going to hold up pretty well. So I just tightened it up as much as I could and just made sure it was good and tight and not going to come apart again. So after a final successful test, that concludes this video. If you like this video, please hit the like button, throw a comment below, let me know what you liked about it. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please hit that subscribe button. Also make sure you hit that bell icon so you can be notified of when I release future videos. Also please check out some of the other videos I have. You might find something else you like. Be sure to go into the description and check out the link to James' channel. He's got some really great content over there and also you might want to check out his tool build off. I'm really glad I did. As always, I appreciate it and thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.